Cool. Welcome back to Michigan Brews. Uh, tonight, everybody, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I always fuck these up. Uh, so this next episode, we're on episode four, right? And we don't, we're not really counting the point fives where we just uh, talk and bullshit. So um, episode four, continuing the dream of, of drinking on camera and bullshit with people. <laughs> uh and, and getting people to, to somehow watch our, our stupid shit that's awesome uh so in this tonight we're going to be talking to ed nash uh he is the master brewer co-founder arclight brewing company in water uh i think him and uh and his business partner dave opened arclight in july of 2014 and if nobody has ever tried arclight's amazing sours you're missing out um that's the kind of focus is uh their sour smith series just some amazing uh barrel aged sours and uh and i think they've also they also have a quite a selection of uh of sodas and uh new england's recently and mm -hmm. just some solid solid beer out there so uh let's get to it we'll bring ed in hey ed welcome hey how's it going everybody hey ed so you know normally we talk about what we're drinking first and then we get into like the guest beer a little bit later but since this is a bomber a creek that i got to get through i wanted to start off <laughs> uh I, I wanted to start off right off here let me kill my filter so we can see this so so we're going to get into 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 ed's beer a little bit before uh we we, we dive into some of the questions and shit so tonight we're going to be drinking uh the sour smith uh creek which I see is a, is is actually won a gold medal in Fo, Fo, Fobab, right? Yep. Uh, Festival yep. of Barrel Aged Beers. So that's yeah, awesome. Kidding. Was it just the Creek, or did any of the other Sour Smith series? Uh, just the Creek. Just the Creek. Yeah. All right. So so let's get into this because, like yeah. I said, it's a lot of beer to power through, and then the next hour or so. I did want to say I appreciate it. I don't know if I can put it up on the screen at all, but the uh, recommended glassware on the label was kind of nice. I tried oh. to get close to that <laughs> as much as I can, but yeah, typically, you know, the creeks are uh, served with fluted glassware. Yeah, not this... always available. Tonight I'm gonna have to go with an arc light uh, goblet. That's the best no, I got. Can't go wrong now. And... Well, that's what I got too. But see, mine's got ice cream in it. <laughs> hey. So, oh. so uh, this is a, this is the first time I've tried this. So. The creek beer. over ice cream. Have you done any of the yeah. other sours over ice cream? I have not. So since it's a beautiful summer evening. Hell yeah. Oh, we can oh, get that in that. there. Look at that. That is so, amazing. Are these uh, mm -hmm. like Montgomery cherries that are in here or? Um, they're, you know? It's actually a blend of dark sweet and tart. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's about a 50-50 blend. Obviously, yeah. the the original cherries uh, that they use uh, aren't available in the United States. So, right, because Creek is traditionally a right uh, Belgian style right. Of ale, right? Yeah, right. Super good, super tart, really fruity. Oh, uh, the, the carbonation is like. Amy, if yeah. you're listening and we have vanilla ice cream in the freezer, you should bring me some. Yeah. Do you um <laughs> do you force carve these and then bottle? Yeah, we do force carve. We don't how do you, how do you how do you get them in the bottles with all that <clears throat> that carbonation without just like spilling it everywhere? <laughs> well, I mean it's um we'll use counter counter filling. Counter okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's carved to about three volumes because that's traditional for a for a creek. It is, or, uh, yeah. or, or a lambic, I should say, a lamb, fruit lambic. Okay. The fruit lambic. So I was able to 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 go over there and help bottle uh, red raspberry once, right? And that was mm -hmm. you. It's very sparkling. A uh, higher CO two. I think you were pushing yeah. like, like thirty or forty pounds, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah to counterfill it. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So. That's nuts. So we'll get back into that. Uh, so, so how long have how long have you been brewing, Ed? I started brewing about two thousand nine. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing a regular home brew setup, or did you um, extract your brewing bag? Or so um, the backstory on the home brewing is uh, my father used to home brew back in the late seventies. Right on. And, and then he made uh, soda. He made uh, cherry and root beer soda. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were exposed to brewing from early on. Of course, back in those days, I remember he would get hops in the mail 
and there would be a, one big giant block of yellow leaf, like oh the whole cone, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like whole yeah the whole cone, because back then, and um, my dad's eighty five now, and I've asked him about it. He doesn't really remember where he used to order them from, but you know back in the seventies there. But anyways, um, so we are exposed to uh brewing back then my brother and i and then uh it was always hit or miss some of his beers were like really good and others were not because he would ferment in the laundry room <laughs> so, and he would have these plastic five gallon uh plastic you know was, uh you can buy them today like they break down like they yeah, push together yeah. yeah and they had a bubble around there and i remember he would have them on a top shelf up there and you know depending on the time of the year what the fermentation temperature would be well, I mean, back in the '70s, that's before all the the white lab strains and all that shit, right? So yeah, so he used bread yeast. Bread yeast. And uh, what he would use for the malt though was kind of interesting. So Paps Blue Ribbon used to make in big cans, like big mm -hmm. pudding cans. Mm -hmm. He used to make uh, malt extract, and you could buy it here in town at Harding's. Um, and it was the dark one, and he used it for baking. But my dad would buy it and then add water and dilute it down to whatever the specific gravity he wanted. And then he, he asked the guy one day, he goes, you know, they make a light one. Can you get that in? And then he started carrying the light one. So that's how you get, I remember, cans with pass food ribbon on it, on the label. And it said malt for baking, malt syrup. <laughs> original. <laughs> the original. Yeah, yeah, the original. <laughs> yeah, and uh you know, gosh knows how long. Probably lambic hops is what they was using because <laughs> right. they're so old, yeah. cheesy, <laughs> cheesy hops. Did you ever try to recre recreate your your father's brews? Uh, no, <laughs> no. It's was, it was, it was kind of funny because uh, he'd have friends come over and and he would always break out. He always bottled in twenty twos, and he would always break out a couple bottles and they would drink those, and then they would switch over to uh, some commercial beer finish off the night but um yeah i remember that as a I was about 10 or 12 something like that i remember that happening so anyway so moving on um uh i was living in chicago at the time and um i happened to be at a yard sale and there was a beer making kit and the girlfriend i had at the time suggested i get a hobby probably leave her alone <laughs> but, um <laughs> So it was five bucks and it's still, it was never open and you can still see what had like wrapping paper left on it from, you know, somebody got it for Christmas, but they never even did anything with it. And it was actually a pretty nice kit. It was like uh, one of those hundred dollar kits with plastic buckets and everything. Oh, right. So then I went to, uh, and it actually had a stamp on there, the homebrew store it was from uh, on the South side of Chicago there. So I went there and I bought a extract kit so I could re-familiar myself with the brewing process which was a Kolsch kit. And um, I ended up taking third place. That was my first beer competition. Took third place with it. So I brewed. That was the one and only time I ever brewed with an extract kit. Really? Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Then I found um, that single tier brew system. Uh, the plans for that. Um, it was a brew your own has that. You can buy the plans. And I found a guy to weld up the frame, and then um, I got some uh, kettles for it. And uh, I've been doing all grain ever since. Yeah. And I would brew. The job I, I had at the time, I was lucky I was traveling. Uh, I had the West Coast and the upper Midwest as my sales territory. So that really helped me, expose me to some really great craft breweries. And I would, uh, on my trips, I would make plans of who I was going to visit knowing that one day I was going to do it pro and I wanted to have a brewery, get some ideas and stuff, how they do it. So, so you, uh, you just start brewing and then you're automatically doing corporate espionage to, uh, to, to, to yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, 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 uh, with literally within weeks, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, I just started into all grain brewing and I, bought a green mill and I had a two bedroom apartment, 800 square foot, two bedroom apartment. And the one bedroom basically turned into, uh, my, um, fermentation room and, uh, supply house. Now you mentioned the single tier, which I really wish I had pictures. Cause, uh, I, I think it's the one that I've, I've kind of 
rehomed for you and that's uh adopted yeah it's this highly polished uh Kaggle yeah. system on a single tier and you used to have that sitting in your living room right that uh, was kitchen like your, or in your kitchen <laughs> well i had my kitchen but my front door was in the kitchen yeah you know it's a small apartment yeah so um <laughs> I knew I would have people over and stuff and I didn't want this ugly thing sitting in my kitchen. So I spent eight hours a piece on those kettles, polished it to a mirror. <laughs> it's three, yeah, it's three kegs, mirror polish, or at least. Yeah. Mirror polish. Yeah. I, I really yeah, need to, like I need center. to clean yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, <laughs> took a, that was a lot of work. And, um, yeah, so I would brew on that thing, uh, three or four times a week sometimes. Where do you have room and, to store all that beer? And, oh, joke. <laughs> well, that was the thing was like some of it had to be moved out after a while. So I ended up dumping some of it because I would like get um, excited about a different beer style that I wanted to brew or something <laughs> like that. So then I would like, okay, you know, this amber ale is going because I'm going to start doing like a lager or something. So, and the good thing too, I haven't, I'd be gone for a week or two weeks at a time. So I would brew and then, you know, because when you first get into brewing, you always you just kind of sit there and you like watch your fermentation, like your hands are on it, you yep. keep messing with it and everything. Well, this way I brew the, the night before and then I'd leave. And then when I came back a week later, fermentation was done. And, um, you know, I could like I was always checking, pulling the lid up and stuff. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> risk, risk an infection and stuff because you, know, you get pretty excited about yeah. the whole process. And um, you just want to like keep your hands all over it so that's how you got into yeah. sour beer right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually i'll be honest with you i have i never ever had a beer go uh, south on me never go Without, wild never go wild on me no never did it's uh Same. for as many stories as you hear about like uh you know infected beers and stuff like that i feel like it's a lot harder to do than the stories you hear you have to be real dirty sometimes i think i don't i, well, I haven't either is the reason i say that no nah, well, you 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 helped with the one come uh, on uh, <laughs> dog shit sour yeah dog shit i never sour. i never remember my dad having a bad beer um because it was going sour or anything like that and i i remember reading on the forums once so one guy was making a point he said his dad used to uh brew beer and set it by the shitter and he never had an affected batch <laughs> <laughs> well so, i mean i i fermented for the first two or three years of, of brewing i fermented in the basement bathroom i mean i just yeah. uh you know it stored down there kept it clean and kept it away from it and yeah we just uh we just finally scraped the raspberries off the ceiling of that. <laughs> <laughs> just like wall yeah, paper. I think you know be, the process of the brewing process with the pH being dropped and once you pitch a healthy yeast, it gets grabs hold pretty fast, so yeah. it doesn't really give a chance for anything else. Plus, um, the souring lacto is what sours fast. I mean, fast. And of course, if you have oxygen, acetobacter will turn to vinegar fast. But pediococcus works pretty slow, and and so um, um, it's hard to get a pedio infection. Not saying you can't, right? But it just takes a long time for that. At least that's my experience. To, to even like be lacto like, taste or present or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So lac, but lacto, that's the one you're trying to beat to the punch. Yeah. When you're, you know. Or the opposite, right? <laughs> and speaking of that, I see they just uh, came out. Fermentus just came out with a sour mm -hmm. yeast that produces both uh, lactic acid and um, uh, alcohol. You I, see that? That. I, I haven't seen that one yet, so it's it's got to have a yeah. Just a, and a, it's a strain. Uh, yeah, some strain. I just caught a brief article on it, and uh, it's available now. Yeah, so I might give that a try here in the future. It would be interesting to see. Interesting. Yeah. So when did you, yeah. uh, going from homebrew, what, when did you end up deciding to take that transition into going pro? Um, when I lost my job <laughs> in oh. sales. That's fair. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. And it was either stay in the corporate world or go do something you're passionate about. So I pursued uh, the brewery. Always do something you're passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. Get behind that. 
which I love because uh, honestly, I've never got up in the morning going, oh, I got to go to work today. It's always, you know, you kind of you really look forward to doing whatever you got to do. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so you, uh, you you lose your job and and you start. I mean, is that how did how did you connect with Dave and and come up with the idea for uh, opening a brewery? Uh, I met him through a mutual friend. Right. Yeah, and um, he's uh, very much into craft beer. So uh, we got to talking, and one thing led to another, and uh, we ended up back here in Waterville. So, was there an, an uh, initially? And I thought I remember you telling me this once, but wasn't our clay? Weren't you looking somewhere else first? Um, or am I actually, wrong? My, my, my brother and I, my brother lived in the Quad Cities, um, yeah. and uh, we had looked out there, and we were actually looking at a porn theater <laughs> that had been <laughs> closed, closed down, and uh, they were gonna, the city was gonna sell it to us for a buck. Nice. And, uh, but it, wow. it would have took so much to clean it, but, uh, <laughs> uh would there, would there have been enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting. Actually, it was a beautiful theater. It was a Egyptian theater and the upper, the upper balcony still had the original seats in it. And, um, with the Egyptian, I don't know if you guys know anything about like old architecture stuff, but the, like a lot of the theaters back in, in the 20s and 30s had like Egyptian um, uh, symbols and stuff on the mm -hmm. chairs and everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would have been like, it was gorgeous. But they did have downstairs, they had tore out all the seats on the main floor and put in booths. So, oh, uh, wow. yeah, and a lot of the booths were gone, but some were still there. And it, I don't know how long it had been sitting empty, but, yeah, it was pretty... Would have been a great spot for a cruise ship. Man, it must have been. Just collect been all that. Right. I know, I know, right. <laughs> Actually, just yeah. just buy the building to be a cool ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was like, yeah, then it just didn't didn't pan out. I mean, the money, I think it had asbestos and stuff, and um, <sighs> it would have took like a million dollars just to renovate it to the point. Plus, the floor was slanted, you know, for the seats. Oh, yeah, and theater, right. Yeah, theater. So that, you know, and it was dark in there to really see anything. It was the lighting in there wasn't good. So it was really hard to see. But man, potential that, that could have led into just so many different great beers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, and then what we used to be. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, we looked at a building down the street, and that one was renovated. And it was kind of neat. But the problem I had was they, <clears throat> excuse me, they had a furnace in there. And we guy gave us a tour. Somebody had broke it in and stole all the copper. <laughs> so I was oh, like, "Well, yeah. I don't know if I want to put a brewery in, you know, like that." So, right, yeah. And then uh, we just kind of kept looking, and then I ran into Dave, and the rest is history. What used to be in the uh, the building where the current ArcLight uh, brewery is? Uh, it was a car dealership. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know exactly when the, the the original building was built, but um, it's been there since like at least the twenties. Did you put in all that glass behind the bar then, or is that from like the car dealer? I did, I okay. did, yeah. So like going back to, uh, I was telling you when I was traveling all these breweries, I go visit all these breweries on the West Coast and uh, in the Upper Midwest. And one of the things was like looking at how they did things and how it made it appealing. So uh, the one thing I always liked was be able to see the brewery behind the bar. Yeah, I love that. So, so that's why we do the glass that way. Uh, the bar we have is 50 feet long. And one thing I always enjoy, like when you go to a crap brewery, like everybody wants to sit at the bar. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of breweries that I visited, the bars, and for whatever reason, maybe they didn't have the space or something, but have like an eight-foot bar or 12-foot bar. Well, it takes about – you got to figure out three foot per person. So you can't get a lot of people. And so a lot of people are, have to sit on tables or whatever, and it kind of keeps them away from that. So I just felt like I wanted to make sure the bar was big enough to accommodate as many people as we could. So we made use of that space and made it 50 feet long Dang. for that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. there's kind of a reason for everything that the big ass fan that we have in there yeah. that came from, yeah. um, Oscar blues. If you've ever been to Oscar mm -hmm. blues, oh, I, I have been really? to Oscar oh, that's blues. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. They actually have a big red one and they have like, um, 
it's like a warehouse or whatever, and they have a tap room and ski balls. So it was really cool if you ever been there. And garage doors, and there's no air conditioning, Which, but they uh, have a big ass fan don't on it. Don't they have two? They have one in North. Yeah, Carolina they and one in Colorado, right? Yeah, this is Colorado. This is back in the day. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one that I. Yeah, in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when I go out to Colorado, I always go to that. They actually have a restaurant out there, too, but I've only been to one time. But this is where the brewery was at. Okay. And then and then there's uh, railroad tracks for your feet. Um, that okay. came that idea actually came from another brewery in Colorado as well. Uh, the outdoor, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. It was a small brewery where it was in there. And I remember, like, oh, that was cool, railroad track for putting your feet on yeah. at the bar. And then the front seating actually comes from um, uh, another brewery, Denver. What's the the Bigfoot? They have the Bigfoot. Uh, Great Divide. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, I think it's Is Great Divide. It? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah double check. Or Yeti. They have Yeti. 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 Yeah. It has a Yeti. Yeah. So uh, we welded it up because they had the same kind of setup, and I took pictures of that. So yeah. No, it's a, it's a really great space nice big open space like picnic tables like the bar uh yeah. really nice beer garden what made you put bocce ball back in there i mean bocce oh, hasn't been around ball. since fi- the 50s yeah. like <laughs> well the reason i did bocce ball was uh because nobody really had that no <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. well i mean like people have other things you know and we try to be a little bit different but i'm actually surprised at how many people love bocce and they'll travel here because we have a bocce court that was the first time i ever played was at arc light so yeah yeah so uh it's like i guess you call it lawn bowling or something yeah. sometimes they call that but um the, f- the funny thing about it is so a uh regulation bocce court is 90 feet long well, that's wow. as long as our tap room. Our tap room's 80 feet long. So there's no way we had room to put a regulation bocce in there. So we shortened it, obviously. I think it's like 25 feet or something. But, you know. That's not bad. Probably makes the games go by a little faster. Yeah, you don't have to walk as far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But, and the tradition, man, that is really good with ice cream. You got to try that. Um, I was just gonna yeah, ask how that was. I, it? Yeah. <laughs> I saw Amy. Amy put a note in earlier that said, oh, oh, "All we have is mint chocolate chip," and I don't. I don't think so. I don't. <laughs> mint chocolate chip. It, yeah, you got. You need that with a, like a chocolate pastry stout. Then. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No mint chocolate. Uh, chip. But going back to the bocce, uh, they use oyster shell as the bed for that. So we were we had to look everywhere for it, but we ended up getting it at a farm supply. Not at all clear for that. Oh, so, so really, it's, it's, it's legit. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I, it's I, funny because people are like, oh, I'm going to go out there with uh, bare feet. Uh, you, you don't want to walk on oyster shells. With bare feet, yeah, they cut up. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, and that stuff seems to last like, that stuff's been out there for five or six years. And it's like, it does not, you would think that it would dissolve, but <laughs> it doesn't. No. Well, I mean, or, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, it's what beaches are ultimately made out of is, is ground up shells and yeah. shit. They're yeah. never going to go anywhere. And shit. <laughs> and shit. Yeah. So, Syringes. Ed, where, where does where does arc light come from? What, what does that mean? I mean, I know what an arc light is, but like, what, what's the significance yeah. there? Yeah, so anybody who's going to start a brewery, that's like the toughest job, especially now coming up with a name. <laughs> well, and, I, and I hear beer names even are like starting to like run low. Yeah. Like people are, are having to make up words and stuff. Well, I mean, think about it like two or three years ago. It was already, I mean, there was already breweries suing other breweries or some Hop cease and desist. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, when we name a beer, and I'll get back to your question in a minute, but when, no, we no, name, when you name beer today, you basically go on untapped. <laughs> <laughs> And see, you know, not not who has it, but how many other people. Will, will and, I be uh, sued? If, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. If they're a big enough brewery, you think they'll sue you? No. I'm, <clears throat> but seriously, you do. Yeah, you go on there and you use uh, Untapped or Right Beer or whatever the other one, and um, see if somebody else has it. And it, it'll surprise you too, because sometimes you think, oh, there's no way somebody's gonna have this beer name, and uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. So, um, but. Um, Arclight. So Arclight, uh, there was a fellow in town here that wrote three historical books on Waterville, and Dave and I were going through it one day, and um, we came across uh, there's a 
a paragraph in there that in 1919, water of elite had uh, arc lights for street lighting. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Uh. And um, so we just kind of looked at each other and he was like, Hey, how about arc light? Uh, all right. Sounds good. No, that's okay. it. I, anticlimactic. No, no. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it is. That's pretty good. I always, I, I, I've told you this before, but I always thought when I first started going there, you know, especially since everything in, in your bathrooms are all metal and there's there's a lot of, you know, metal or welding, what looks like welding work around, I thought it was yeah. dark light from a weld. And that's what I thought. Yeah. Especially the logo, which I don't know if you can see, you know, being being all these little lines and stuff, I took them yeah. as like sparks flying off of of the uh beer glass like the spray so uh we have a friend of that mutual friend actually that introduced uh, david i he is a graphic artist and um he came up with the design it's just an abstract it's nothing yeah. more than that and it just <laughs> like kind of look cool and um he has a brewery too now in chicago and a restaurant called alulu and if you get a chance to check that out, it's in Pilsen neighborhood over there. Um, and you'll actually see on his, you actually will see those uh, bubbles on the logo. You can see uh, he uses those too as well. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So, but um, no, the fabrication of metal is because one, I can weld. <laughs> and two, two, it's easy to fabricate out of metal. Uh, it was less expensive. So like the bathroom stalls, I welded up and everything wow. because I could. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, the outdoor seating. Um, yeah, it was the same same reason. So I know a lot of people, just two things they think. They ask if it's because in Vietnam there was a Operation Arclight bombing campaign and it has nothing to do with that and it has nothing nothing to do with welding no it's just a name like like dave said you know so we could have named it bob or whatever it's just a name yeah yeah nash brewing nash, nash brewing so, no we, we we've talked about the naming stuff before and and yeah you, you seem to be pretty pretty picky or critical on names every time i come up with my brewery name you tell me it's shit so <laughs> Who does? You do. I do. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to put some thought into it because there, we kind of talk about this. Um, some names out there. I, I'm not going to mention any, but sure, they, sure, they, sure. They don't. They don't. I mean, you got to have a name that kind of seems somewhat inviting or something. Just not like Elm Street Brewing. I mean, I don't know if there's one out there called that, but it just seems like it's kind of bland, you know. That like zombie yeah. skull crush brewing company or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, skull crusher. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, well, that's interesting. These guys are kind like they're cutting edge and aggressive. Let's go check out their beer. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, you guys, yeah, you get your prejudice like that. Sometimes you're like, well, I don't know if I want to go in there. I don't know. That name doesn't sound very uh, inviting, but. Yeah. Uh, here, I but I mean, you got that. stuff like uh, like Lagunitas. I mean, some things just fall into place. Russian River, Lagunitas, yeah, yeah. It's just cool. Like you know, they you're lucky cool. enough. Yeah, they're lucky enough to uh, be in an area or somewhere you can get a cool name. Yeah. Speaking of names, I mean, there you go, man. Your boy's <laughs> your your own son's calling your ass out. Why haven't you named beer after him yet? <laughs> Is he really? Yeah. Well, I don't I see the comments. Named... Oh, I don't a... see comments. Says, uh, it should be on the screen. It says, I'm still wondering why he hasn't named the beer after me yet from Jason. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get an answer, uh, Jason. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you're not going to get one. Yeah. We'll talk about that offline. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, since, since we're, we're sitting here drinking this, and this is a fine sour, by the way, I'm thoroughly. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's amazing. So <clears> what, what, uh, what got you into making sours? How was how how that journey? Go? Did you get into um, it off the bat or? No, um, I was at a party once, and, the, and this guy uh, he says, uh, "Hey, I, I got a sour. It's uh, Cantillon." I go, oh, "Who's that?" And he, um, this is before maybe when I was just trying to get into brewing, and um, I don't remember what Cantillon it was, but it wasn't a fruit. It wasn't a lambic. And he's like, oh, this is the best sour in the world. And I said, oh, let me try it. And I tried it, and I was not impressed with it. <laughs> and so I kind of, like, was turned off by sours at first. 
And then um, I was somebody like another party, and somebody had uh, uh, Cantillon Creek. Um, oh, no, 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 no. It was New Glarus. Yeah, New Glarus. That's the one that turned me on to it. And then I got a hold of a Cantillon Creek, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And we used to have bottle shares when I lived in Chicago there with other brewers. And we always have sours, like from Cantillon or whatever, Boone. And I would take the dregs home, and I had a five-gallon uh, carboy that I was souring. I was going to do uh, a creek with it and make my own. And uh, I just let it sit for a year in my closet, and I would come over with these dregs and just keep pouring the dregs in there. And um, that became the basis for what you guys are drinking today. That's awesome. Yeah. And then when I when we opened the brewery here, I had a friend um, down south of town here had a orchard, uh, he had apple and cherry orchard. And so I took some wort in a jar with some uh, cheesecloth on it and um, hung them out for a couple nights. And then I uh, actually I had one in a barn. I had one in a cherry tree and one in an apple tree. And then I took the samples, I put them in the closet and I let them ferment out. And the one in the barn had black mold. So that got tossed. And then the cherry one had like this really beautiful floral fruity nose on it. And the apple one had like this baby diaper nose to it. I strangely know exactly what that's. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was like, Whoa. So I ended up, uh, for that one, I end up doing another five gallon carboy and I pitch those in there and let those sit in there for like eight months. And, uh, then I added cherries to it, whole cherries to it and then let that go. And then, then we started using that. I started pitching that into the art barrels. So it's like, it's kind of interesting cause it's really morphed cause it's got his local yeast in it. And then I'm sure there's, uh, there's some European strain in there, and I've, of course I used White Labs back in the day, their sour mix, uh, to start it all off and everything. So it's just got a huge uh, eclectic mixture of all kinds of uh, bugs in there. <laughs> the way, best way to put it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, go ahead. Uh, as I say, uh, so last year I did that again. I uh, did some work for the next batch that we're fermenting now. I, I took it out, hung them out in some trees. But just a little bit jars, and then grow it up from there. So just keep propping that up. Interesting. Yeah. So you yeah. guys, you guys have quite an extensive sour project now. I mean, there's mm-hmm. probably dozens of different uh, flavors of the lambic. Like, what can you walk us through? What's Arclight's process, or because um, you've got the food. It's proprietary. <laughs> <laughs> So you're, you're brewing this beer, uh, and, and how long are you guys aging uh, in the fooders for? Uh, we age, so the process is, uh, we start the souring process for the first six months. We just let the bugs do what they do, and then we add fruit for the final six months. And then at 12 months, we start uh, taste testing them. And then, do, you have uh, to, do you have to punch down the fruit like often, like when you add that, or like how do you prevent that from like molding? Or is there like a no? We never punch it down. No, really? actually, okay. the fruit drops. That's when you know it's done. The fruit is will drop. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the most part, it'll drop. Okay. Or if you shake it a little bit, they'll just because they just become uh-huh. saturated with uh with uh with the beer and then <laughs> drop drop out. Yeah. Is there like a specific like a pH or titratable acidity, acidity that you're like trying to hit or anything? Or? Yeah, so like with pH is it's a good indicator where you're at in your sour thing, but it's not it doesn't really tell the whole story because um, you can have some three point twos, three point ones that are pretty sour, and then you can have some that are pretty mild at that pH range. And I'm just trying to trying to figure that that out. But some of the we get some of ours are down to about two point nine. Oh my god! But they're not like like tongue stripping sour. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, yeah. I, I honestly, I, I don't really know. We just know we we have to be in that certain range. 
so that uh, we get the pretty good sourness because some barrels will, they can be the same pH, but they don't have that sour bite like the other barrel does. So they end up, we end up blending those. You, you have to do an unfortunate amount of taste testing, I'm sure. Just uh, <laughs> it's so hard. You do. And if you, um, <laughs> You gotta have the stomach for it too, because some oh, people man, have, yeah. have, have to have tums. Some people can't <laughs> can't drink more in a glass, where other people can drink a whole bottle and doesn't bother. Like me, it doesn't really bother me. I remember uh, a few years ago having the rhubarb. You did a rhubarb sour. Yeah. And uh, strawberry think, rhubarb. No, I think this was this was pure rhubarb. No, we never did. We Are never did. Sure? It's straight, yeah, all positive. Years ago, man, I thought that. Well, I thought it was. Maybe it had strawberry. In it. That was the the most tongue stripping one that I can remember. Mm, for, for the yeah. aggressively sour, not tongue stripping, but it was it was pretty aggressive. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. The yeah. early years, you know, were playing around and just some. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe the fruit introduces a, another strain or something that does that. But right on. Yeah, it might be uh, free loading. So I've tried to get this out of you before, and I don't really have any good luck with it. But what do you, what do you, what do you got? If I want to get into sours, like what's a good uh, entryway, or what do you recommend for home brewers that want to start playing around with sours? As far as what? How to how to get into it? How to how to culture a sour, or or any precautions to take when when playing with sours? Or well, I mean, if you want to do the safe bet, you can do the White Labs has the sour mix. Uh, y East probably does too. Um, I mean, a Lambic is pretty basic. It's just a wheat beer. Really, mm-hmm. it's basically 50 50 of wheat and uh, um, two row or something like that. But, uh, the, you know, the funny thing about it, I don't even know if it's really about the grain because that beer ages for so long. It's really about the yeast and about the fruit if you're fruiting it. Um, but if you really want to have fun is to go and get yourself, make the wort, put it in a jar, put cheesecloth on her and then tie it off with a tree for a couple, three days, put it around. (laughs) Yeah. And then do several of them. Don't do one because like I said, it just wash it, put in the closet, let it sit. You'll start to see it start. Um, it'll fizz like, and then it'll start to grow a pellicle on there. And obviously if it's dark gray, black, throw it out. You don't want to use it. Right. But what you, do, right. you take the cheesecloth off, and then you then you just put the lid on with the solid lid on, like a ball. Mm-hmm. What I use, like yeah. a, those ball jars, and um, just crack the lid a little bit so a little bit of air can get in there. You know, not too much, but to keep any dust or anything from settling in there, and let it do its thing. And let that sit for about a month or so, maybe two months, and then see what you got. <laughs> and then um, then do a five gallon batch, and then pitch that into there. And then, um, if you want to, if you want to do the fruited, and then just let it go for six months, and then um, add the fruit you want. So when when you're pitching that in there as the base, are you using any other uh, Saccharomyces strain to get alcohol, or is that it's doing? Oh, that? okay. So uh, you brew the beer like you normally do, and we uh, we pitch. Um, yeah, like. Uh, you can use any beer, beer yeast, 05, whatever, because like I said, it sits for so long that any of that character is going to be long gone uh, from that type of yeast. So yeah, you're going to ferment it out like a regular beer. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So after, I don't know, uh, for um, after three or four weeks, then, uh, put your bugs on it and then just put it somewhere, uh, cool and dark and, um, I want to say cool, best. cool, but uh, yeah, yeah. It takes a long time for uh, to really do anything, you know, and, and then it'll form the pellicle, and it, it could form it pretty fast, or it could take several months. And then now, um, I, I've got one I started when I had this conversation with you like uh, eighteen months ago, and uh, I started one, and then the, the my issues with the basement happened, and construction happened, and. Whatever, it's still sitting in the carboy. It's been a year and a half now. I haven't even tried it. Kind of scared of it. But <laughs> it's just sitting in there. Yeah, we'll see. It's a lambic base. It's been eight to eighteen months now. Uh, let's try that thing. Yeah, yeah, it should be. It should be fine. Um, put some fruit on it. Fruit makes everything better. Yeah, it does. Hides <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mistakes. Uh, Ed, how do you feel about kettle sours? Um, if you would have asked me like a year ago, 
I'm not a fan. But um, now we're working on kettle sour. I just did one. And um, it's, man, I got to tell you, it's pretty amazing. It's got these pineapple <laughs> notes and everything. Huh. And uh, we're, uh, in fact, this week we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be fruiting one. And I might say too much, but they're going to be like tiki drinks. Ooh. Okay. So it's going to have like pineapple, coconut, uh, orange, stuff like that in there. So that'll be your first one coming out. That's like the first um, weather to put that out. Yeah. 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 So we did, actually, I did an Imperial, uh, Imperial uh, Berliner Weiss so that we can uh, add the fruit. And this should come out about 8%. Oh, Sweet. Wow. Yeah. Is, is that before adding fruit? Like it like it's gonna yeah. like water down a little bit then? Or? Yeah, right now it's in the fermenter, it's ten percent. Oh. <laughs> wow. So it's the final. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when you add the fruit and everything, it'll it'll deproof it down. And it should be about eight percent. Yeah, so look for that coming out maybe about two, three weeks. Yeah, three, yeah. four weeks. Sweet and nice. uh yeah. And um yeah, I'm gonna say it's, it's gonna be pretty good. <laughs> so and I like doing that kind of stuff. Um, straight Berliner vices. I'm not too much of a fan of just a straight Berliner because they're, I don't know, they're, just, they're good for what they are is for my taste, you know. They're just kind of straight. As you guys can figure out, I love fruit and beer. I do too, man. So I'm not. I'm, I, I'm not I don't shy anymore. away. I know some people get like, some people get in kind of shape. They don't want any fruit in their beer. You uh, you like doctor drinks in general, kind of a little bit. You do, you, you guys do like a like a rim job thing for your glasses on some of your drinks, don't you? Like, uh, hey, what the, what yeah. the hell is this rim yeah, job? I was curious about, <laughs> about my question. Yeah. So, um, so, um, are we doing? <laughs> what's that? Not, What's that, Jordan? No. Oh. I think Jordan got caught off guard. He didn't know, he didn't know what a rim job was. Yeah, so. yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it was. I was just like, what? Yeah, so we did a uh, sticker do. It started out with a uh, sticker do that we do. This was a uh, porter that tastes like a sticker doodle. And um, I said, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could rim it with cinnamon, sugar, and honey? So we that's what we started doing. And it became, it became quite popular. And, and uh, of course, rim job. I, honestly, you can't really call it anything else because that's what, exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You know, on the rim of the, of the glass and the job, right? But it's funny that we've had people come in here and one guy was like, yeah, your girlfriend says you do the best rim job. And. <laughs> <laughs> you get all these innuendos and everything so people have like a lot of fun with it too so then we do a velvet alvis which is a peanut butter porter that we do peanut butter banana porter and we give that a rim job and that's a uh, powdered peanut butter with honey and sugar so it just adds a nice little sweetness yeah. as you sip it yeah yeah, yeah. It's and like it's messy the... it can be messy you know some people <laughs> like a, a very light a little bit of a uh, little light honey and cinnamon sugar. Other people like it where it's just oozing down. So <laughs> yeah, they yeah, do. yeah. They everybody, do. everybody has They're their sloppy. own personal preference. <laughs> that's that's the visual aesthetics of it. You know? Yeah, it just yeah. Helps, helps create that that visual profile. But we thought it'd be something kind of fun. I didn't think it really last, but yeah, I mean. People look forward to coming in and getting that, that rim job. Like, you know, you want a rim job? And they're like, oh, yeah, I want that rim job. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of fun with it. I'm going to take my I'm gonna take my wife there. Uh, I don't think she knows. <laughs> so she's will. not on yeah. right now. She's watching the kids. Yeah. I'm going to order a rim job. And yeah. Gonna give me some weird looks. You got to send her up yeah. to the bar, and then you can just yell at it. <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> yeah, don't forget the rim job. There, yeah. there we go. Make it so sloppy. I, if I search uh, rim job water vleet, is ArcLight going to come up or am I going to? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show your screen, Brian, and do a live search. Let's see what happens. Uh, no, we're not going to share that. So no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tried. I'm glad. I'm glad we didn't do that live. <laughs> so one of the other things that you know, I've, I've been going to ArcLight for a while now, and you seem to always have uh something new or exciting and and whether it be uh pbr doing the, the the hard coffee so you rolled out a hard coffee or you had beer slushies or right um you know the the sours have always been solid but you're also doing seltzers like what what do you personally think of all of those kind of trend beers i, I mean you guys seem to go along with it as long as it brings people to the table yep i'm for it you know um 
Seltzer's actually quite been quite challenging, and I enjoy doing it. I'm getting ready actually to do one this week, an, another batch, because our hard coffee is uh, pretty popular, and um, people have been asking for it. Yeah, so, no, hard coffee's great. Um, oh, I didn't even know it was out. I'll have to try some. Well, next yeah, time it's out. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's a still version of the seltzer. It's basically the same base, and uh, we use that. To, and we do the hard coffee. We add uh, coffee, obviously, and cream and stuff, and sugar. So it's like a frappuccino. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really delicious, actually. Um, and then the seltzers. Yeah, I like when I'm out enjoying the summer day and stuff. Sometimes you just don't want a heavy IPA or something like that. And seltzers fit the bill. I kind of like the. I don't drink it to lose weight or anything like that, or because it's got less calories. I just like it because it's not super fruited, super sugar. You know, it's just yeah. really, yeah, yeah. it's just, totally it's just a change, a palate change. Yeah, I agree. So, and so breweries and, are a little uh, restricted with seltzers, right? Like you, you guys actually have to brew like a sugar wash, essentially, right? You have to ferment a sugar wash. You, you can't, uh, well, you can't like water down vodka, right, or something. That's like, yeah. So. Um, I was kind of reading a story about it. It's kind of interesting. You know, like in Canada and stuff, you can use vodka and hmm. do that. Do that. And in, that. in the United States, apparently they would do it, except for the tax law. And they found by doing a malt beverage, they can get around that. So that's oh. why. So that's why all your uh, hard root beers and all that is malt beverage. Because like Smirnoff and stuff. Okay. Yeah, because it's taxed like a it's taxed like a beer. Oh, okay. as opposed to like uh, alcohol um, spirits. Like so, uh, yeah, spirit drink. So, um, yeah, that's what I was like reading a, an article a while back on that. I said, oh, that makes sense. So, if they ever did changes to the tax laws, you'd probably see a lot hard root beer and everything made with like um, what do you call? Um, I don't want to say vodka, but um, neutral spirits. Neutral spirits. Yeah. yeah, neutral spirits. Yeah. So, say that malt. Yeah. Is, malt beverage is about as close as you can get but it works out too because you know you don't want that high alcohol yeah for these ty types of drinks anyways mm -hmm. so but you can make it pretty high i mean you can probably make them up to 20 percent easily what do the abvs turn out on your sours usually do you even know yeah um shockingly like uh about nine percent anywhere from eight and a half to oh. nine and a half percent yeah and this, we, this nah, creek we, is up there in that range? Yeah, Creek is 9.2, I think. <laughs> You're kidding um, me. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Cheers. Cheap, nah, we my, don't, cheap, my cheeks are a little red, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to say, I'm well, feeling this a little But we don't, shoot for, we don't shoot for ABV like that. Sure. Um, It just turns out that way. There you go, um, Ed. Oh, my gosh. You drank that whole thing? Well, I shared, I shared a little bit of mine with uh, my girlfriend who snuck in. But yeah, I'm done, too. I am. I guess ice cream's yeah. killing it. <laughs> I wish I had the ice cream. Yeah. She's not back from the store? No, no, man. She's, she's not helping me out tonight. You should get an ice cream maker. She could have made it while you're... you Did go. you make that ice cream, Ed, that you're eating? Well, I do make my own ice cream, but I didn't okay. make this, no. Okay. No. No, I was at the store today, and I'm like, I'm going to do ice cream on mine. Are you, uh, uh, are you guys fixing to break out the slushy machines yet? <laughs> Probably soon. Soon. Have you done that before? Yeah. I, again, but, I yeah. Last summer. Okay. Last summer we did. Uh, we had a pita colada Berliner Weiss that we uh, <laughs> had so a slushy good. machine. Yeah, it was good. Did yeah. you add like syrups to it, or was it just like uh, like straight? We we did, yeah because the with a slushy machine you have to have a high bricks content to keep it uh, from Slush. freezing up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, keep it slushy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cream of coconut, whatever. I don't put it in there. Cool. Yeah. So we we talked about it as I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, you guys do a lot of of sodas, and you said your dad used to brew sodas. Is that why I think you got you got into the sodas? Because it's another thing you took from yeah. your father. Or? Yeah, yeah. So the root beer we make, you know, we use molasses and honey, uh, Mexican vanilla, and uh, we do use uh, root beer extract, but it's the same one Sprecher uses. Oh, okay. oh that stuff is so For, good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's just. It's the same company that Sprecher uses. Mm -hmm. This company produces over sixty different root beer extracts. Oh no! And uh, they do, and they'll 
and it's kind of interesting because Sprecher buys two of them from them and blends them, and they buy it back from Sprecher because it's proprietary, and they don't know what the blend is, <laughs> and they resell it as as uh, yeah, Sprecher. Sprecher. Yeah, Sprecher's uh, <laughs> the base, but we don't buy that. We, I have my own uh, from them, so okay. Uh, it's more I like more of the honey. Like I don't care for wintergreen uh, root beer. Like a lot of root beers are wintergreen based, and I don't care for that. I prefer more of a a lot less of that. So, but yeah, it's that one and um, but our orange soda is made from orange juice. Uh, ginger ale is made from uh, ginger root. I. Uh, I shred all our ginger and make that. Uh, lemon lime is all made from juice. Uh, lemon lime soda. Um, the only one that's all extract is rock and rye that we do. We make our own rock and rye soda, right. which is and I made that just as kind of like they sent me a sample and I made it and it sold like hotcakes. <laughs> so we've been making it ever since. It was a Michigan thing. Yeah. yeah how, do, how do you how do you make soda? Is it do you do you use yeast in it? Like how? I guess I don't. No. I've never actually made soda. Okay. I didn't no, think so. Right? It's no, it's just okay. we add uh, pure sugar, water, and then uh, whatever the uh, flavor is. Okay. Um, and then we do fifteen gallon batches. So uh, we got ke we have kegs that are uh, modified to take carb stones, mm. and then we mix it, and then we. Uh, carb it and then uh that's why a lot of times we come in and we it's off we don't have it for like three or four days because we have to make another batch and it takes because we let it sit overnight in the cooler to chill before we carbonate it so it takes carbon carb right in the in the serving keg yeah yeah right in the serving huh. keg so we make it up we mix it up and then right in the keg and then uh then it gets carved right in the keg yeah and so uh, this one fits in here. Do you have? Uh, do you guys do any bottling, or have you canned any of your uh, sodas? We do can sodas. Uh, you can buy growlers of them, but we don't. We don't bottle them for sale. Well, I was there yesterday and saw the ginger ale label. So you, you've you've canned it, or, or you you sell it? Yeah, in cans instead of bottles, then, right? Yeah, you can it, and we have a canner now, a single canner. And if you come in and ask, um, they use. They usually come in early and uh, do a couple cans of each. Uh, but if you want to get a can, you can. I, I believe you can just ask them or call ahead and tell them you would like to purchase it. Yeah. They'll can, can it up for you. Yeah. Yeah, we do grapefruit soda. That was all grapefruit juice. And we do shandies. And that was the other thing, too. Um, like our orange shandy is a lot of people come in. And a lot of people come in because whoever they're with likes to drink beer, but they don't like beer. Yep. And they say, well, have the shandy. And you can, it's an 80 20 mix 80% uh, beer, 20% of the orange soda or lemon, lime, ginger, whatever, uh, grapefruit. And, uh, but you can have it mixed any way you want. You want 50 50, we'll do 50 50. And, uh, that gets a lot of people drinking and some get introduced to craft beer that way. They, you know, they start out re that was really light. Then yeah. they work yeah. their way to something like uh, arc light cream ale or PBR that we do. And then next thing you know, they're on um, slamming IPAs. Are, uh, are there any weird like uh, beer and soda combinations you've like discovered? Yeah. So pretty good. We do have customers that actually come in and uh, make their own or, you know, they want to taste this or that. Um, we do one is called um, um, uh, what's it called uh, Marcy's Playground, which is uh, cherry wit and rock and rye, and uh, it's called Marcy's Playground because it tastes like sex and candy. Like <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, so uh, there's one they do with actually the creek. They do the the creek and uh, rock and rye. Uh, I can't remember what they call Ooh. that one. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like, you know, you go to some like uh, some of these um, restaurants or whatever, and they have stuff that's off the menu, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you have to ask for it. Like, I think yeah. In-N-Out Burger has animal, animal style or something. Animal style. So you go in there. Yeah. And then you go in there. So you go in there. I can't remember what they call the, the creek and the rock and rye, but um, if you ask for it, they'll, they'll make it up for you. So, yeah. But, yeah, actually, if, if you want to mix a couple beers or soda or, I mean, just tell them. They'll do it for you. Yeah. 
when we had we're not, uh, we're not pretentious when it comes to like <laughs> yeah. that. Because I mean, yeah, I don't get all stuck up on like uh, the purity of of it. This is how we um, wanted to, you know, be tasted by you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I just, I just, it's. I think it turns people off. Like, uh, you know, I would never have lemon in my beer. That's not authentic or something. That's, but if that tastes good to you and that's what you want and that gets you drinking crap beer, hey, that's that's I'm why I think that's a great attitude. Uh, there's some breweries that that'll say that they don't want to do seltzers because it's not beer they don't want to yeah. do you know a different style and i kind of like that yeah. you guys you guys do it all just because it's fun and it's, it, if people like it and yeah enjoy it well you said that the seltzer was kind of a challenge to you too ed right so like yeah it is a challenge because you know you gotta you clarify it clarifying it and removing flavor and um yeah it's a challenge to to do that i mean obviously you don't want a hazy seltzer because that's Everybody knows what seltzer looks like. You'd be growing up like club soda or whatever. That's what you expect when you order it. Yep. It's like a club yeah. soda looking product. So, uh, that, yeah, we were able to get that um, um, through our process. That, you know, but it takes it takes work. It's not it's not something simple to throw together. It takes us just as much work to make seltzer as it does any beer. Actually, it's probably easier to make a cream ale than it is to make seltzer. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, Jordan, you brewed a seltzer for Homebrew Fest last year, right? I, I did. Did I did. you do any kind of clarification on it, or did you just let it go? No, I, I, I did. I believe I uh, uh, threw some, uh, well, uh, well, shoot, what's the um, sorbet? I sorbated it, dropped the yeast out, mm -hmm. and then uh, just for shits and giggles, threw in some pectic, because, you know, whatever. Not that it would do much, but it turned, it turned out all right. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty clear if I remember, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, it was okay. I don't think the the flavor profile was quite where I wanted to be, but it was my first one. And I don't know if you, if uh, Ed, if you guys do it this way, but <clears throat> reading it up on how to do it, uh, I did like a a, sh a sugar wash and then re diluted it. So I brewed like a something that was like oh ten percent or so, and then back diluted it from there. Yeah, so that's what we also did. We did 8%, and so we wanted a 5% seltzer because that's where the calories come from in this is the alcohol. Yep. So, um, we and plus with diluting with water, obviously gives it more of the water profile you're looking for. So, yeah, we deproof it with water. We did 8% because I knew I was going to split the batch and make uh, hard coffee. And again, adding the cream and sugar and stuff to it, uh, we want to make sure that it, we came in about 6% on that product. And then the other part batch, the other half of the batch, we you add water to it to deproof it down to 5%. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do that. When I did it, I just did a straight champagne yeast pitch in the full five gallon batch, and it, yeah. it came out whiny and. And I, and I really, I really liked it. Was that the same one you brought to Homebrew Fest? Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked that because you, yours was watermelon, right? Watermelon lime. Yeah. I did use real lime juice and then watermelon flavoring, but it was your flavor profile was like spot on. I remember I was, I was a little jealous. I feel like you yeah. had that pretty hand well. map, hand map, <laughs> right on logger. So uh, this batch that we're going to do, we're actually going to be using vodka distiller's yeast. Oh, vodka yeast, right? Interesting. Yeah, vodka distillers, yeah. And that's just uh, to try to get the most neutral flavor. Neutral. Try yep. to get the most neutral because you're trying to – the problem with the sugar wash is you got to be careful is you do get that wine character. If you so, do like with, with beer yeast, you will get the wine or wine yeast. So you yeah. using vodka yeast, uh, I assume that's more alcohol tolerant. Are you going to brew it uh, at a higher ABV start and then dilute back down? Or? No. Nope, no, I'm going to do a seven barrel batch. Um, I think it's just above 8%. Just works out that way. Uh, we're going to be using uh, this one, we're going to be using rice and uh, corn sugar. All right, that was going to be and, and, what type of sugars you use. Yeah. The last one we did was 100% uh, corn sugar. This one, we're going to do rice syrup with it uh, to get more of a neutral profile as possible. Okay. Um, it's a vodka distiller turbo yeast, so it has all the nutrients in there. Um, although the, 
the syrup does have uh, a lot of nutrients in there for the yeast, but we want to be careful about how much this turbo yeast we put in there. That's going to be the key. And since this is a new process, it's going to be uh, hit or miss. So we haven't, I haven't decided like how much to put in there. I have more than enough to do the batch, but I don't know if I want to use all of it. So. Right. Yeah, that's well, kind of cool. Well, I don't know if yeah. we get that at the home brewer scale. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can. yeah. They actually, yeah. you can. They sell it. I got a uh, one kilo package, but you can buy it in uh, twenty gram. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Oh, interesting. All right. Austin Homebrew is where we got it. Got it from. So they have the packets, but other homebrew places have it too. I actually, like another turbo yeast had all the nutrients like included in the packet. So yeah, cool. it actually has am amylase and everything in there. So you can yeah. actually do a sugar wash. You might be able to do a sugar wash with it because it does have all the nutrients in there. And then the strain should be pretty clean. So you may not get that wine character. Huh. I'll check that out. Yeah, because it actually it mentions in there that it's good for sugar yeah. washes. Hmm. Uh, white Labs, if you want White Labs, they actually sell, they sell it as well. And it would mention, I was reading it up on it today and it said that. It, uh, they recommend it for sugar washers. Hmm. So, this white labs yeah. is called distillers yeast or something, or v vodka distillers yeast. Yeah, vodka distillers. Okay. Yeah, they have different ones. They have uh, for whiskey and stuff. So I don't know. The strain is more neutral. I just came across it. I was didn't realize there was a vodka distiller. I just figured I knew there's distillers yeast, but I didn't know they had yeah. specific kinds. Of, but they seem either. to be. I mean, it's like everything now. Like, I mean, you can get a yeast for every <laughs> beer style. Yeah, sure. You can get yeast for every uh, spirit style. I mean, uh, wine. Now, now yeast that produces yeast. Uh, uh, lactic acid while fermenting. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, um, it's you know, and I think about this, like going back to my dad, like the choices he had compared well even when i started brewing was way i mean it's crazy like i would go on my travels too i would go to northern brewer and midwest brewing i don't know if you guys have ever bought anything from midwest brewing yep. online yeah but in minneapolis i would go it was like a sam's club i would save oh, i would save all there. my yeah, I would save my uh, whatever I needed to when I got up there. And then you go in there, and it's got those racks just like Sam's Club. I mean, they got, oh, man, they had, like, unbelievable. And then it was funny because you'd be there looking for your stuff, and then these people would be coming, pulling stuff off the shelf for orders. With you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It was, yeah, it was kind of weird. It's like you, can, yeah. you see them got a list, and they're pulling stuff off the shelf, and they go in there, and you can see them packing it all up and shipping That's it cool. out. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah. Yeah, that was back in the. It was cool to see all that. Yeah, Northern Brewer that they uh, that they, they had some great stores too up there. That was really cool to go up there and visit that that stuff. So Brian, you just cracked the lager. Mm -hmm. Ed, what kind of lagers are you doing at ArcLight? Well, I love lagers, and uh, we do uh, we call it Pro Brewers Reserve, which is a PBR. Uh, my take on PBR. And um, one of the reasons I do is because I love pizza and I love just having a beer, just a beer with pizza, just a great combo. So I brew PBR <laughs> and it's probably our second most popular, if not the most popular. And we do a light version and we also do a dark version of the PBR. It's seasonal. No, I never had the dark version. Yeah. Dark okay. version. Yeah. So, yeah. It's almost like a Cascadian version. Of yeah. PBR. Yeah. Cascadian. <laughs> Yeah, you know it, <laughs> but better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, and then we do um, a couple Pilsners. We do a Blue Star Pilsner, which is your Bohemian Pilsner. We have a, I have a new Pilsner on right now called Southern uh, Latitudes, which is Citra and Lemon Drop. And um, so it's a different take on a German Pilsner, mm -hmm. uh, hops that obviously you don't normally use in a Pilsner. It's a pretty and then, hop, uh, hop, hop forward Pilsner. It's yeah, it's a hop forward Pilsner, yeah. It's got a nice little uh, hop bite to it. Yep. And then uh, we do a Turkish Pilsner as well, um, which uh, my assistant brewer, Mark, and I, 
I was in the Air Force and I was in Turkey for a while, and um, he has also visited Turkey. One day we were talking. Uh, I like to prove this Pilsner I used to drink in Turkey is Effie's. And so he's like, oh, I love that beer. So we kind of sat down. We looked at the beer and came up with the recipe for that. And uh, it's called Add a Turk Pilsner. What makes it taste different? Or like, what, what's like a Turkish like Pilsner? I've never had OPM. anything like that. Opium. <laughs> we, we we serve it it wrapped in foil the glass <laughs> no, it's actually it's, uh, aside from the opium it's actually my favorite pilsner there our play it's delicious um it's just an american premium the the beer style is american premium lager is what it is okay. um the only thing that makes it Turkish is the fact that we had it in Turkey. Um, but I get asked that all the time. Like, well, what's the, why is it like they're looking for some the se- as a secret ingredient? No, it's just, um, it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's like these, some of these countries have their national beer. And that was, Effie's is kind of that way. It's a Mediterranean beer. And um, so it's just, it's, it's a little bit of a darker, like I said, a little bit, a little bit of a heavier uh, lager. What did that, what's the hot just profile of that bit. one? Oh, uh, it's just um, German noble hops in it. German noble hops. Right. Is that? Yeah, it's just not like nothing. Uh, we probably use like Holler Tower in there. I don't remember. But it's no, not like lemon drop. That, 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 that. <laughs> right? No, 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 not like pistachios or anything in it. <laughs> like that. Nothing like that. But um, yeah. So yeah, I was we're looking at doing um. Another Pilsner with some New Zealand hops as well. So, you just you know. did a New England all all New Zealand hops, right? Yeah, we did. Yep, yep. Skucks. Skucks. They just released the cans yesterday. Yeah, canned it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I I try to ask the 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 pro brewers that come on here. I, I ask these questions like, what's what? So, what's your favorite macro beer that you drink? In it. Oh, Paps, Blue Ribbon. Mm-hmm. Still PBR. And your yeah. PBR is fantastic. I mean, it's, I, I might even have some. Thanks. It's just a great, I, great, uh, great honor. Off to me a while ago. I like Paps and Hams. Um, it's oh, just a good quality. We've been getting quality Hams made. lately, yeah. <laughs> hams is We've uh, had on the show quite a few episodes lately. I think, I think <laughs> Hams is a special yeah. beer of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah hams, hams is good. I like uh, all the retro because, you know, when I was growing up, Stroh's doesn't taste the same. No, uh, I, I haven't. Yeah, the, the new recipe or the new whatever, though that they've started recreating it. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. So uh, my dad, my dad was born and raised in Milwaukee. We used to go back there and visit my grandmother, and she lived on uh, what they call Brewers Hill, which is above Schlitz and uh, um, Paps Brewery down there. We used to go all the time. And I don't know if you know it's in Wisconsin. If you're with your parents, you can drink. Regardless of your age, I, did, I heard um, that recently. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Still, is it still that way there? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. My son Jason, who's probably I don't know if he's still watching, but um, yeah, we were up. Uh, he went to school in Wisconsin and college there, mm-hmm. but we go up to Milwaukee there, and um, yeah, they say they they ask you, is it okay if he drinks it? Yeah, sure. That's, yeah, as long as you're as long as long as you're with your uh, guardian or parent, it's legal. You can drink. That's crazy. I think I, I think we're we're gonna create a at least a small influx of Wisconsin travel here. Right. I grew up here, you know, a few yeah. Not, a few hours away and I never knew that was a thing. So yeah. That is that is true. I'm only I'm only nineteen years young. That's yeah. So what what's the favorite beer that you make at Arclight? What is your go to? Is it PBR then? Yeah, so no, I get asked that all the time. Um if it's not on a board, it's probably it just depends. It's like it depends on the day and stuff. What I drink the most of is PBR, just because it's the lighter one or the cream ale, because you know you got to keep your wits about you most of the time. But you know, barrel aged uh, sours, whatever I'm in the mood for. I don't like. It's like asking you which one of your kids is the favorite. <laughs> oh, Jason's the right. Which one of your kids is the favorite, Ed? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Sarah. Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my daughters always do that. It's like, which one's your favorite one, Dad? So, 
<laughs> but yeah, there... it's like it's like picking your you know which which kid is your you know it just depends on what day. What day? Right on. <laughs> yeah. And then is there any we... is there any craft beer out there that 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 you go to craft beer? Um. Well, I guess it depends on the beer style. Um, I always feel like Oscar Blues, man, they make some great stuff. It's solid, you know. Uh, but New Glarus, uh, they make great stuff. Um, Founders has some really good stuff. It's always solid. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, there's so many good breweries out there that has some really good stuff. I had some f- stuff from Corporate Chair. I think it was called Corporate Chair in Florida. Excellent stuff. Uh, Southern Grist, they do some good stuff. Um, there's so many breweries out there. It's just they've been, they all have some really good stuff. So, yeah. Can't just, I can't just say one brewery that sticks out the, the most to me. What's your what's your favorite from uh, from Oscar Blues? Just I only ask because that's one of my favorites uh, breweries as well. Oh gosh, that uh, Death by Coconut is pretty good. Yeah, that's that's uh, a yes. fan favorite for sure. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that one uh, Gubner. I mean, their Scotch Ale that they do is oh, Old uh, Chubb. Uh, yeah, old, old Chubb is good. Um, what's that Imperial Stout that they do? Uh, ten fifty. Yeah, ten fifty. Ten fifty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't had it in a long time, and that's just uh, saw the shoots. Man, they make some great stuff. Um. Shoots, ah, shoots just, fresh squeeze is one of the one of my go to um, IPAs. I love yeah, that. I would agree. Yeah, and a little known fact: Mose is based on fresh squeeze. Oh, your Mose, nice Mose IPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right I mean, it's not a replica. It's not a clone or anything <laughs> of it. No, but it's. Uh, in, in, yeah, everybody needs fine. inspiration. Yeah. yeah, inspiration though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Mm-hmm. We had a, we had a question back in the chat that we missed a little bit ago from Brandon. It, I think it was just a one little thing, but uh, as far as like ArcLight goes and like the whole pandemic and stuff like that, like how's how's how how that all work out for you? Were you doing like you know beer takeout or you know how's, how things going? Uh, yeah, we did uh, carry out Thursday through Saturday. We did very well. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, great support. Um, we opened up, I think, last Monday. Okay. Yeah. It was nice to see a lot of regulars came in and stuff. Um, yeah, everybody, you can tell everybody was like, you know, itching to get back into the swing of going to breweries and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we have been too, for sure. Yeah. I've hit up a few. But, I mean, it gave us, uh, I mean, we didn't sit around and not do anything. We were able to get a lot of things done, you know maintenance wise and stuff Mm -hmm. so get caught up on uh, a lot of things and rethink a lot of things and stuff so yeah it it wasn't bad all the way around you know so we were able to get some good out of it let me scroll back to questions just to see again sadly i didn't have any vanilla ice cream does anybody else have any (laughs) questions for ed (laughs) and then uh uh, we've got uh, TK. He's been a viewer of ours for a while now. So it's hoping to be up that way soon. He moved. He used to, uh, I don't know if I ever brought Trent down to see you. Trent's a friend of mine um, from up here in Madawan. Our sons actually live together, and uh, he, he managed to move down to Illinois. Uh, he's a can collector, so I should probably start snagging you some of uh, some of your new cans for him. Well, our uh, Skucks and Isolated Paradise went to Chicago today. So Did it? Yeah, the skucks. I like the label on the the skucks. It was yeah. It it, it reminded me of something like um, there's a political ad I think that used to just be that red background single word. I can't yeah. remember what it was, but it looked familiar or inspired by or whatever. I don't know. You don't have anything to do with the yeah. can art, do you? No, no. It's minimalist, and I like it. Yeah, yeah. Just plain white can, the one word. Yeah, you you have to spend uh. 15 minutes reading everything. <laughs> <laughs> all the little secrets. Yeah, all the secrets or whatever. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, so, I think uh, I think we're about wrapped up. Um, I really appreciate you coming and spending some time with us tonight, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, really good to meet you, Ed. Where, uh, you guys distribute local? Like, where can people go buy any, is there any big place that you uh, sell or just in the, the shop 
Um, well, because of COVID, we haven't been getting out with distribution, but typically, you know, we're in Detroit, Ann Arbor, Grand Rapids. We do make uh, runs there, Kalamazoo, um, and then we've been pushing a lot in Chicago area lately. Right. Um, local around us is like in Niles, a brass eye. Uh, right. He carries cans and uh, keeps us on tap there quite a bit. Lambricks in uh, Ben Harbor, St. Joe area. Yeah, that, this is off the top of my head I can think of. Yeah, well, I don't really deal too much with distribution. So, but if you follow us on Facebook, that's where everything gets posted. Like yeah, we do. Uh, we do uh, distribution runs and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Hit them up on Facebook. And, Go ahead. I was going to say, if there's a liquor store or a bottle shop or something near you um, and they don't have us, uh, tell them to contact us, reach out to us. I believe on our website at arclightbrewing.com, there's a link where they can um, request inf more request information. For, yeah, for yeah, exactly. So well, we, have, we have it here talking about distribution. We have a late question. Do you distribute the sodas at all? or? Uh, we do not. No. And... Um, I don't think we'll ever d distribute sodas. We just don't have the capacity right now since, you know, we you just self kind of do it, right? Yeah, we self distribute. Oh, okay. uh, well, capacity for making sodas on, you know, um, that kind of quantity for distribution. You know, you almost have to get a bottling line or, or canning line to, to do something I, like I, that. Uh, so 15 gallons is a go a whole long, I think, a, whole, a whole lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> so just so to right now, that, right. To bring that back up, Joe Joe is uh, owns a candy shop here in Madawan. So I don't know, Joe, were you looking to put some ArcLight sodas in the shop? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Madawan. I mean, I think it'd be Madawan cool if people are buying the, the sodas, but but uh, we we I mean, we don't manufacture in big enough quantities and stuff to to really yeah. do that. Uh, unfortunately, right now, yeah. Well, it's only thirty minutes from Kalamazoo. Uh, to head down to Arclight, everybody should check it out. Um, Sours are amazing, and like I said, the New England's everything else he's doing is it's been pretty rock rock solid lately. So I'll be down there in the next few weeks for sure. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So uh, next week we'll be back Monday the twenty second, seven thirty with Deb. Uh, we confirmed a guest. Yeah, from Agabur. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time that we've actually been able to announce a guest a week in advance. So. Uh, for those of you that are watching that do Tagabrew, uh, Deb from Tagabrew is going to be on from us. Super pumped to have her uh, with us next week. And uh, and then hopefully we can start booking a couple of weeks out and actually get some notifications going. So cool. Thanks again, Ed. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, yeah. Ed. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.